We are in the 1300s officially. And we're going to be playing the French once again against e4. And here against knight d2 slash knight c3, we're going to be going for the uh, Fort Knox variation, uh, which theoretically speaking is known to be a little bit inferior to the main lines, but the idea is that uh, we're trying to trade off the typical quote unquote bad French bishop. And yeah, then we get kind of like a car composition, you may say. K knight is coming into d7, bishop's going into d6. Uh, gonna be castling? Yeah. Mm, most of the times you end up giving up the bishop pair by taking one f3, but I'm not gonna rush it. I'm just gonna play bishop b7. And then the idea is to play bishop d5 and c5. Because there are lines where taking one f3 is kind of mandatory but not when they play inferior lines where you actually afford to get in bishop d5 and c5 and just get a totally normal game yeah just go c5 and should be already quite pleasant for me i can take with a bishop go for more trades which i think i like taking with the knight was fine of course knight's coming into e4 uh, queen c2, gonna play like knight e4, also rook c8 is just very natural move, or the idea to play like knight e4 next, and this knight cannot really move because c3 will hang. I'm expecting bishop d3, but I'll play like uh, queen c7, sidestepping uh, that dangerous file, and then I'm also preparing to take back with the bishop. Queen's under attack, okay, you can play b5 and then take one c3. But I think there's a better way of doing this trick. And I think that's with a6. Although knight d6 is kind of looming, so I have to watch out for it. Just gonna play rook d8, keep it very solid. I was about to blunder knight d6, which would have been really terrible. Although I can still take one f3, maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe a6 now. We do trade a lot of stuff, but I'm not particularly concerned. Let's see how the 1300s play the end games he goes knight e5 which is a reasonable move i'm gonna go b5 hitting the knight if he takes i still have to take he might play knight e3 now and maybe i go queen d6 hitting this knight ah i think i missed queen c7 that was maybe perhaps better hitting the c3 pawn as well Hurts even more when you see it. I mean, it's better to not see that you miss something during the game. <laughs> Just gonna make a Luft. So I'm not gonna get like back rank, uh, checkmate it anytime. I feel like trading queen should be beneficial when you have bishop against knight type of end games. He's attacking my bishop. I'm gonna attack his pawn though. He goes a3, but I'm gonna go uh, bishop a2, hitting this one once again. And he plays c4, trying to bail out, but I am up a pawn for the moment. And I think I'm going to keep that pawn for a while. I'm definitely looking forward in trading a pair of knights, by the way. Like with knight d5. He can take and go knight e7 check, but I don't mind it. Because it's going to be a winning king and pawn endgame for me. Just going to bring the king. Again, he can take on d5, but that's just an instant win for me. Just going to play g5. It's a nice move to have. Um, yeah, I think bishop c4 is kind of nice to to get. King d6, e5, f5 ideas. I mean, f5 first. Yeah, f5. Bishop f1 idea next. Winning this guy. Bishop f1. Knight d3, and we take and we uh, also manage to defend it. Uh, I've actually uh, met with Christian for the first time online. I believe he was... Uh, actually my first sub win and i had my own twitch stream so yeah i mean honestly like that time i i didn't even like believe when someone like told me in the chat that it's him i thought that it's like a joke but uh, i mean obviously i guess every like professional romanian player uh heard of him at least 
Uh, I obviously knew him. I mean, I knew like a lot of stories about him and that he was world champion under 18 and I actually was under 16, I believe. But um, yeah, it happens that he also uh, went to the same high school as me, uh, which is pretty funny. And yeah, I think, okay, I'm just gonna take everything and I'm gonna quit. So yeah, I think we met online and we used to like raid each other occasionally and this kind of stuff. And yeah, like, I don't know, we talked occasionally on like Instagram or uh, in Twitch chats or so. Uh, we have like a French for the last game where he plays second move bishop c4 and we're gonna get like sort of an exchange French type of position but I really love this lines because people seem to play so bad against the French in like lower ratings and I know when you play like 1e5 in lower ratings they go for a lot of like uh, Italian, Rui Lopez, even early Queen attacks that are annoying to face if you're not familiar with them. So maybe the French is actually the answer. Let's start playing the French, everyone. How about that? I already have a slightly better position. I'm gonna get my knight to e4. He's gonna get knight to g3, but we're gonna be taking. And he takes with the f1, which is interesting, but it's weakening this square. I want to still play it um, somewhat clean, so I'm thinking whether to play like knight g4, knight into e3, but knight g4 there's knight e5, which is a bit of a problem. So I think I'll start with like queen e4 first, and then knight e5, maybe just rook e7 or queen e3 combined with rook e7. The idea is that I want to be moving this knight without hanging f7. Okay, I think I can go like queen h6 at the very least. Knight's coming into e4. Then I'm going to be kicking his knight with f6. I don't love the fringe, personally speaking, but... I think it might be a good weapon for uh, lower rated players. G4, gonna go knight e4. But uh, hey, I mean, I played the French my, myself in some tournament games. I think it's very interesting opening. Like, uh, I'm not sure if it's good, but I definitely think it's a very interesting opening. And I've also planned to do like a French course for, uh, <laughs> for the, uh, for Chessable, yeah. <laughs> Where's the vampire stick? That is a pretty funny one. <laughs> so yeah, I, I might actually have the French as one of my upcoming Chessable courses. But this French that I mentioned with like Bishop D7 to C6 and this lines where we are looking for to trade off the uh, pet French Bishop. I think this way I like it, even though the other French lines are interesting, like... Knight e2, knight f6, it's pretty bad, but you get interesting positions. Um, and, you know, win away is also, like, full of interesting stuff. Steinitz has some, like, tricky lines, like, especially Firuzia Lupulescu game as, is a very instructive one. Or you can literally lose as white against the French as a 2700 guy from the opening. It's definitely a lot of interesting to play. Well, I like to play the London, but... Uh, I do have uh, one e4 full series for chessable, so literally my last part is gonna come out tomorrow. So uh, I am a big one e4 guy, but I do fell in love with the London system after making like 70 videos for my YouTube channel, and I might do a London course in the future as well. And I really like the London because it's a nice way to like get rid of the Berlin and this kind of. Annoying openings that get rid of all the play pretty quickly, like the Petrov as well, against e4. I'm kind of tired of those after analyzing them for a lot, but 
yeah, the London seems to be pretty interesting. I mean, it's not easy to play, but I mean, I'm talking it's not easy to play in like uh, professional games, but I think it's definitely a very sort of meta opening that it's still developing and we see it more and more often at the top level. Uh, so in the first game we do get uh, one e4 and uh, during this speedrun uh, I'll try to play the French defense as often as I can and uh, we're gonna be getting an interesting game as my opponent plays uh, what it looked to be like a king's indian attack but in the king's indian attack the knight belongs to d2 so I'm actually a little bit surprised already by what my opponent is playing and I'm thinking whether I should be playing with c5 or whether I should be going knight c6 because that is also uh, an interesting line in my opinion. But I'm just going to play uh, like the usual way with c5. This is pretty standard so far. My opponent takes on d5 which is definitely not uh, something that uh, they normally go for. And I'm just going to try to like develop normally. Um, I think we develop with knight f6. I don't think I should be afraid of bishop g5 because there's bishop e6 and... Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be playing bishop e7, castling short as fast as I can. I can definitely play d4 next if I want to. Uh, he plays knight h2, which is kind of decentralizing his piece in a way. Um, and I really want to get in d4, and I'm gonna answer knight e4 with knight d5. The idea to keep more pieces on the board and try to get in f5 maybe. Yeah, I'm just gonna play knight d5, I is to play f5 next. And, you know, I do have a little bit of the uh, extra space and then I might even look for ideas to, uh, yeah, activate my bishop. I was about to say, this is actually running right in my idea that I was going to play it anyways, but now it's even winning a piece because of this uh, really juicy fork. So, uh, yeah, another pretty successful French, I would, uh, I would say. And my opponent uh, literally just resigned. So we will cash in this first win. And uh, yeah, we can go for uh, the next one. And we're gonna be going e4, e6. Uh, we're gonna be sticking with the solid French, and we do get actually uh, c4, which is gonna be a real test because I don't really know the theory that well. But my opponent plays d3, meaning that uh, eh -eh, we're not gonna be getting theory, and we're gonna be getting uh, an end game that I believe should be quite okay for me. But I'm thinking uh, I'm still debating whether I should be going e5 or not, opening up this bishop. Um, I think it's definitely a good move and the main reason is that we're getting into King's Indian type of structures but uh, we will be able to play c6 and there's a big difference between this square and d4 that is weak should be having the red color and we're actually controlling this one with the pawn so this is actually quite a substantial difference and I'm gonna be just playing c6 I'm gonna play it really slow I'm gonna go knight d7 or actually I'll start this way with developing the bishop. Knight d7 now. I'm looking forward to meet bishop e3 with bishop to c5. That's what I was thinking. And if he takes, I'm gonna take with a knight. And now I have an idea to play knight b3 and then knight d4, which he allows, luckily for me. And now I can castle if I want to. I think that's a useful move. I could play rook d8 as well. Um, I think castling should be really okay. Like, I could keep my rook for like a5 ideas, but I think castling should be definitely uh, fine. And I do have a juicy choice between taking and going knight c1 for the fork. And I think we're just gonna go with a good old fork now, and we're gonna be collecting that uh, misplaced rook on a2. And then we're also gonna end up picking up the knight with this nice tactic. So we're literally gonna be collecting all the pieces. So this just turns out to be a massive disaster for my opponent. He plays knight h3. I'm just gonna snipe that knight off and I'm gonna be playing rook a1 next, making sure that he's not gonna finish development soon. Gonna be going knight e7. Knight is heading towards f4. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna be getting my knight to f4. He's still struggling to finish development, and I'm gonna go knight f4 check, gaining a tempo, and then I'm gonna be collecting the rook. And now I'm actually up two rooks, and I'm gonna be trapping his bishop pretty soon, I'm assuming. So he just resigns, okay. I think that was actually a nice kind of positional game, uh, taking advantage of his weak squares. 
and we're gonna be playing the French defense once again. We're having a 1300 this time, and uh, we do get to see actually the advanced variation, which is pretty interesting because we don't see that very often. And he plays bishop e3, which is already a big mistake. Like when you play the advanced variation, you should always play it with c3, uh, make sure that your pawns will be uh, nicely defended by each other. Because now we can simply take uh, on d4, and then he will have big issues defending this pawn on e5. Going to be playing knight c6. Ideas to take this bishop, and I will just play knight e7, preparing to take uh, back with a knight on c6. So uh, if he doesn't take, I'm just going to play bishop d7. Fred is to take. Fred might be also knight e5. Uh, that is that is a cute one to watch out for. And now we're taking, and um, I think we can just take on uh, d4. Play queen b6 next. Okay, he does take with a queen. I don't want to go for the queen trade in that fashion. Uh, maybe the end game is also like decent, but uh, after the last game, no, 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 thank you, no end games. Gonna go rook c8 this time. Okay, he does play c3. Gonna develop with tempo, hitting his queen. Plays queen d3, and just gonna go queen b6 now. Not only developing the queen, also maybe going bishop to b5. You know, activating that bad French bishop. So, uh, bishop b5 would not be great because he takes, but uh, I can drop it here. Bishop b5 was still like a great threat, so he plays knight d4 against that, but we can castle. And next up, I think the plan is to just undermine its queen side. I could also play like bishop b5 now, if I really want it. What about breaking with f6? Uh, that is generally kind of okay in the French. You know what? We're gonna go for it. I think that's what a French player would do. I'm just gonna take with a bishop, and my bishops are razor sharp now. If he goes knight d2, this allows a very beautiful tactic because uh, the pawn on c3 is actually takeable because then we take on uh, on d4. We're gonna be winning back the exchange, and not only we can uh, take on a1, but also f2 will be hanging. So this is like a typical example for the French when your pieces uh, are actually working together once this break is delivered. Because now this is hanging, this is hanging, and this is definitely a great position. Like you can even play e5 and you're much better. I also like bishop b5 here as a sort of a funny move because he's unable to do anything. He's literally capped. We're threatening to take there, and I think he has to play like knight f3. If the rook moves, we're actually going to end up winning the queen. So he does come up with knight f3 move, which is good. But uh, I think we can just uh, take on f1 and keep our bishop with bishop f6. I think that's maybe uh, cleanest. I could also take, which is also very strong. I think I will just take. If he plays queen g4, we can win his queen with bishop f2. He does play h3. I think we can just keep the bishop with like bishop to b6. I'll keep it to c5, because if he goes king h12, I want bishop d6 ideas. I think he might try to hide with the king on like h2, I don't know, I just have a feeling. Goes queen g5, and I'm gonna be offering an endgame. As a French player, I think you should be okay with endgames. If he takes, I'm up like million pawns, definitely happy playing this position. Just gonna defend bishop with b6. If he goes rook e1 hitting this pawn, I wasn't sure what to do honestly in the previous game. It's gonna go rook e4 to e2. And yeah, I'll have to really speed up. And also for like the upcoming games, I definitely think I should be more focused on playing and trying to like uh, do commentary while my opponents are thinking because it's definitely not an easy task doing commentary in like. Uh, three minutes games so just gonna do this and knight goes back take a2 i can't take with the rook on f2 because he will take with the rook on c5 and i'm losing the piece gonna push my a pawn because a pawn is pretty quick and then gonna take on f2 yeah push him baby push him baby yeah gonna keep pushing baby Yep, we're quitting. I think we've got this one. Rook b1 next. Rook b1 is coming next. And then I'm gonna be quitting. No matter what he does. Rook b1 first and he doesn't even stop me from quitting. 
and we do end up getting another queen so he resigns okay that was that was fair that was actually fair so see guys this is actually like a very uh instructive theme uh when i made this exchange sacrifice i think first of all f6 was the best move we can also like check it with the computer if you are uh curious because i don't know i don't really trust my french uh instincts all that much because the french defense is really the opening that i hate the most as a 1e4 player but uh if we use the chess.com computer analysis which is by no means great because all these serious analysis should be done with much stronger engines but um, yeah f6 is actually best move by far it's like a two and a half advantage and the other moves were like one and a half so f6 definitely key move and yeah i don't want to go i don't want to look at this game with the computer anymore i just want to see it like uh in the analysis uh whatever i'll just go through the moves now and uh yeah i really wanted to show you um, this theme that uh well it might look like a little bit trickier to break okay maybe if i was a good move as well uh but what is even better is that we take and not that we want a pawn and we can regain the exchange back immediately but uh, I mean, just look at our bishops, how nicely it's, uh, like, activated, and uh, this bishop is so nice. This is weak. Uh, this guy might be coming in, like he did in the game, and, yeah, white is just completely doomed, and, uh, yeah, I just ended up collecting stuff, and the end game was pretty smooth as well. Here, a uh, very important tactic to watch out for. Do not take this, because uh, white can take this, and... It's not going to be fun if you end up playing this position. I'm going to tell you that. So uh, that was definitely like, you know, a very tempting move because we were planning to play rook c2 and go for the uh, discovery. But rook c5 uh, was something that I had to watch out for. Because maybe some of you are wondering why I have not played that move. So, okay, we can go back to the um, life chest tab. And uh, yeah, we can go for uh, the next game. Okay, we do get the black pieces, and uh, against d4, we're going to be playing the French defense, as I still believe people are struggling to deal with it in this rating, and c 1550 player uh, goes for the exchange line, which should be quite easy to uh, to battle. I could play, like, positional with, like, knight f6 and the standard fury, but I want to get into some kind of uh, long castle position where I can show you how you can try to outplay these guys uh, while going for the attack. So I'm happy to play f6, definitely, because that's a move that we make up... Uh, we make anyways in this structure and now we're going to be playing uh i think bishop to f5 is okay bishop to g4 definitely candidate as well i'm gonna go there because i think it's a little bit more annoying definitely looking forward to provoke some kind of h3 move gonna go queen e7 idea to long castle and uh, on h3 i could go there but i think i'm just gonna go back to e6 making sure this is well defended keeping ideas of knight f5 uh i'm gonna castle now and definitely ideas to like uh, push g5 uh, we can definitely sack. I could go knight f5 as well, and it's gonna be really hard for him to deal with this g5 move because when the bishop goes there, we can take and then uh, go knight e3, and we're gonna be forking him. So he plays knight b5, which maybe is a nice idea, uh, but still should be bad to like g5. I can play bishop f4 as well, looks very tricky to deal with from my opponent's perspective. I think I'm just gonna do that to like keep more pieces. Like g5, he takes on d6, I can take with queen, he plays bishop d3. I can definitely take fights, I'll be up a pawn, but he'll play queen e1, and I think I'll have to take queens, play that endgame where I'm like up a pawn, but um, mm, I think I want to, uh, mm, yeah, go for like more interesting game, I'm just gonna play bishop f4. g5 is huge threat now, he plays g4, big weaknesses by my opponent, uh, gonna take there, gonna play h5 next, uh, thing is if I go h5 he can maybe perhaps go g5 try to keep the file close so i'm considering to go g5 first and yeah then go h5 i think that's how we do it we go g5 first and then we go h5 okay i think i will allow him to take one f4 shouldn't be a biggie maybe he does set up some kind of fortress with with f3 which is sort of annoying he plays it in this order which is definitely not great because i can take first he can still take one f4 if he wants it and I think we can maybe get like a nice kind of idea. Rook h1, queen h7. Yeah, rook h1, maybe he plays king f2. So I'm just going to do this. So now this is big flat. 
This is gonna be big move time, guys. This is big move coming next. Okay, Yuan. He plays C3. He doesn't even know what's gonna happen. Gonna go to Cage One. Magnet sacrifice. Queen is coming in. You know what? We're gonna do it even better. We're gonna go this. This is so unnecessary, but we're giving up another rook for the boys. And now the queen is coming in. And whoops, there will be a checkmate on H2. And there you go with a double rook sack. He wants a rematch. Hell no. We want to play as many people as we can. So uh, yeah, I think that's a nice idea. Obviously, this is like not forced to uh, double sack both rooks, but uh, you know, for the content, I did it. Could have gone queen h7, obviously, first and mate, but uh, I guess this was just a little bit like funnier, anyways.